Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our class BMB 400 Professional Salesmanship. I'm your teacher. I'm Sonia Elvira Guillermo Payay and I will be handling BME 400. So first off, I hope you've already browsed your course outlined and uh, you already have an idea on the topics that we will be discussing in this class. If you notice, our focus would be mainly on the process of selling. Okay, so when we speak of salesmanship, it is actually similar with personal selling. And in your marketing, if you remember your four P's in marketing, we have your product, price, place, and promotion. Okay, your salesmanship or your personal selling is in the promotion of your four P's of marketing. So why is personal selling important? Um, you know, in selling, it actually involves helping customers identify their problems and trying to offer information uh, about the potential solutions and uh, in a way to provide, uh, you know, after sales service so that you would ensure customer satisfaction in the long run. Moreover, it is the job of a salesperson to uncover the special needs of their customers so that they will gain mutual benefit and uh, long-term benefit between the seller and the buyer. Aside from that, there are a lot of salespeople who went on and became successful entrepreneurs. Why? Because they learned to listen to what the customer's uh, needs and wants on a daily basis or on a personal basis. Let's take a look at some of the successful entrepreneurs who started selling. So first off, we have here um, Ray Kroc. I'm sure you're quite familiar with him because he was actually the founder of McDonald's. But before founding uh, McDonald's, he used to sell milkshake machines. And, um, you know, he gained a lot of experience or experiences in selling milkshake machines. That's why when he uh, bought McDonald's, it went on and became one of the most successful food chain industries in the world. Another successful entrepreneur who started as a salesman was Aristotle Onassis. So he was a salesman or a, he sold tobacco okay, before became, uh, becoming a multimillionaire in shipping business. Uh, actually, he was also the husband of Jackie Kennedy when she became a widower. Okay, another salesperson was King Gillette. He was actually a traveling salesman of disposable bottle ca uh, caps before he invented uh, the safety razor. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are using this. Another successful businessman who started okay as a salesman was clement stone so he sold newspaper at the age of six before going on to build a great fortune in insurance industry and i'm sure you're also familiar with this person uh, mary k ash so she co-founded mary k uh, cosmetics with her son all right so these are some of the successful entrepreneurs who actually started okay as salespeople all right so first let's start with the nature of salesmanship so well, as i mentioned earlier when we speak of salesmanship it's quite similar or it's the same as your personal selling or direct selling and we all know that when we speak of personal selling it is a person-to-person -person sale of consumer products or services, okay, away from a fixed location. Why is it away from a fixed location? Because you can go from house to house and sell products. There is no need for you to stay in, uh, uh, in a certain location to sell a certain product. So personal selling is also direct selling. 
So it's also often referred to as your relationship marketing. Why is that? Because in selling, your ultimate objective is basically to make a sale and to keep your customers satisfied. So how will you do that? Of course, you have to present first your product and persuade your customers okay, to buy your product. But in persuading your customers, you have to match their needs with the services or the goods that you are offering. Why? Because your ultimate objective is basically to make a sale, okay, and to keep your customers satisfied. Uh, personal selling is not successful if you do not make a sale and you do not keep your customers satisfied. So you have to remember that it is imperative to always satisfy your customers. Okay, so again, when we speak of salesmanship, it is also uh, referred to as personal selling, which involves a face-to-face -face communication between the prospect and a salesman. It is the act of persuading another, who is that, your customers, to favorably buy your product, your services, or of course, an idea. All right, so when we speak of salesmanship, according to W.G. W. Carter, salesmanship is an attempt, okay, to induce people to buy goods. So it's about helping your prospective customers to realize the value of goods and services. When you say value of goods and services, we're talking about the benefit that your customers can actually gain from using your product okay that would fulfill their needs and wants and a noble mission to help people is of course you know to satisfy their needs and wants it is a noble mission to help people satisfy their needs and wants and that is the ultimate goal of a salesperson so salesmanship again is an art of winning over your buyer's confidence so that a permanent goodwill may be built and a lasting satisfaction may be given to him when he buys the product offered to him. So it's important for a salesperson to build a relationship with the customers. And how will they build a relationship with their, with their customers? Of course, they have to keep their customers satisfied with the products or the services services that they offer okay next so let's take a look at the different advantages of personal selling okay on the consumer side a salesperson and of course the company first let's talk about the consumer side so consumers as i mentioned earlier it is a job the job of a salesperson okay to keep their customers satisfied why because cost consumers or customers okay sometimes may misuse the product if they are not informed properly so consumers can avoid misuse of product because of actual demonstrations conducted during the presentation so that is one of the advantages of personal selling you can demonstrate you can have an actual demonstration on the use of the product okay so that customers will not misuse a certain product okay a salesperson can again immediately answer the queries of customers so if customers are curious about a certain benefit of the product they can immediately ask the salesperson okay so Personal selling commonly uses recommendation and testimonies, which helps customers become more comfortable with their purchase. Aside from that, one of the advantages also of personal selling is that they can have a closer look at the product. They can, um, you know, uh, touch the product. They can try the product. Okay. And people would prefer buying a product okay from a direct seller whom they know or have a relationship with rather than some random stranger so it's very very important to build a relationship with your customers or your potential client
On the other hand, when we speak of the advantage of personal selling in terms of the company's side, okay, it says here that no commission or advertising expense will ever be paid until a product or a service has been sold. So if I were an owner of a company, I will not give okay, a commission to my salesperson if they did not make a sale. So it's an advantage on my part. The company can also help more people in earning profit that would at the same time increase the profits of the company. Why? Because personal selling sometimes base their pay or their money on the commission that they receive. So if I were a seller, I would be more enticed or I would be, um, how will I say this? Um, I would be encouraged okay, to sell more product if I receive a higher commission. So on the side, on the part of the company, on the other hand, uh, if we talk about the company, uh, they can also help more people in earning more profit so if they earn more profit at the same time uh, i as the owner of the company would also increase my profit so it's an advantage on my side all right another advantage of personal selling on the salesman's side is that they are able to conduct business without huge startup cost and risk involved if you are to start your own business of course you have to have a capital okay and you might be encountering a lot of risks but if you are a salesperson a salesman of a certain company okay um you can conduct business without you know risking a huge amount of money and another is that they can defend their products of course thus preserving the good name and image of the company and of course their manufacturers another advantage of personal selling to salesman's side is that there's no need to stock up huge inventories moreover in direct selling of course uh, salespeople may have unlimited earning opportunities, okay, more chances for promotion and growth, less employment requirements. It could also be more fun and adventurous. Why? Because you can travel from uh, place to place to sell your product, less working hours, your, your, your working hour is more flexible, okay, and there is also less tension. And more motivation you are motivated to sell more why because you earn more commission because of that okay so those are the advantages of personal selling to your uh, company consumers and of course the salesman now let's take a look at the building blocks of personal selling okay so basically we have here the three main building blocks of personal selling we have attitude skill and knowledge these are the three most important um, building blocks that is required to personal selling so there are three uh, building blocks of personal selling we have your attitude your skill and knowledge so if you want to become a successful uh, salesperson you need to have domain knowledge proficiency in terms of skills and right attitude first why do we need to have domain knowledge when we speak of domain domain knowledge um as a salesperson it's imperative that you know the product that you are selling okay because if your customers would ask something about your product and you cannot answer your customers they might not buy your product it's also important for a salesperson to know the process of selling you cannot just insist to the person 
that they will buy your product, you have to go through the process of selling. Another is that you have to understand that there are also customers' objections. When we speak of objections, it does not necessarily mean that they are rejecting your product. Perhaps um, your customers might just want to have a closer look at the product that you are buying. So it's very important that you have prior knowledge about your potential clients so that you know how to answer their queries and um, you can give information that would satisfy their needs and wants and you can avoid or remove misunderstandings. So these are some of the skills required to become a successful salesperson. Number one, of course, uh, it also include, includes listening skills. So you need to have a good listening skill. You need to know how to become a good listener so that you listen to the queries of your customers. You know how to answer them if they ask you questions. Aside from listening skill, you need also to ask the right questions to your customers. Questions that would arouse their curiosity about the product. Another is that you need to know how to identify if your customers are willing to buy your product or perhaps they are not willing to buy your product so that you will not waste your time and energy. So you need to know how to identify okay, buying signals. Based on these signals, it says here that a salesperson can plan his next move. If you notice that your customer is very interested uh, in buying your product or interested to buy your product, then okay, you can move to the next uh, process, which is you close the deal. Therefore, it says here he or she needs to be sharp and smart enough to identify his buy these buying signals. So if you're talking to your customers and they listen attentively, they ask questions about your product and uh, you can sense that they are interested to buy your product, okay, then you can make your next move. You can close the deal actually. Another is negotiate, uh, negotiation skill. You need to know how to negotiate and you need to know how to close a deal. So you need to create a win-win situation. When we speak of win-win situation, both the buyer and the seller would actually benefit. Never ever create a situation wherein it's just the buyer okay who benefits and the uh, seller would actually uh, be very very dissatisfied because they lose money so you have to know how to create a win-win situation so closing a sale is actually very important as identifying a prospect therefore it says here successful salespeople are those who are very proficient in closing skill they know exactly what to ask and seek confirmation of the deal another very important building block block of a salesperson is of course attitude so attitude of a salesperson would determine the altitude to which they can rise in their career and in an organization your attitude is very very important if you want to become a successful salesperson person so attitude is equally important as knowledge and skills for salespeople to be successful. In fact, attitude of salespeople determines the altitude to which he can rise in his career and in an organization. So what should be your attitude? Number one, you should have confidence. You know, confidence is very, very important. If you are selling a product and your customers sense that you are not confident about the product they are, you are selling, of course, they will not buy your product. So salespeople who are confident 
they have the ability to convince people okay to buy their product are the ones who can really close or make customers uh, buy their product okay even if they are rejected okay from their attempt to sell a product they can basically bounce back with enthusiasm why because they are confident they can, that they can make a sale sale perhaps to the next customer another is persistence and determination so in life we have to be persistent we have to be determined so similarly in selling your product persistence and determination is very very important you may encounter it says here innumerable obstacles but if you are persistent and if you are determined of course you will achieve what you want in life most especially in selling your product moreover your attitude should also um more on maintaining a long-term relationship with your customers so you have to earn the goodwill of your customer another is that you need to have a friendly personality okay so salespeople need to have a personality that is amicable so that people are comfortable or comfortable talking to you so you need to be friendly you have to smile of course and you have to be enthusiastic if they are asking you questions you need also to ask the right questions it says here to understand the situation of your customers all right another is that you need to know how to be accountable you have to be accountable for yourself for your customers and your organization so you have to take responsibility of your action if you make mistakes then take the responsibility of your action okay another is salespeople also need to be receptive and willing to change you have to be a learner you have to be learner you have to be a learner okay you have to be receptive and be committed and willing to learn okay it's very important if you want to become a successful salesperson so if you want to become a successful salesperson perhaps training okay or trainings could be very helpful so you train yourself to become a successful sales uh, person you have to always remember that attitude okay of a salesperson determines the altitude to which they can rise in their career and in an organization in real life of course if you have a bad attitude about life it won't bring you anywhere so you need to have a good attitude so there are reasons why they fail in personal selling so one of the reasons is that they refuse to learn if you are somebody who refuses to learn of course you will fail whatever career you choose in life if you refuse to learn definitely i tell you you will definitely fail but if you are somebody who is willing to learn okay you're open to um corrections or you're open to learn definitely it can make you successful another reason why people fail in direct selling is that they're not proud of their company how can you convince a person or a customer to buy your product if you are not proud of the product that you are selling you are not um you're not even proud of the company whom you represent of course your customers might not buy your product because they can sense that you do not like your product another is that you lack excitement if you lack lack excitement in selling your product people will not be enticed to buy your product in direct selling business is that they keep on procrastinating when we say procrastinating you try to delay you put up an action instead of selling now you might say oh later i will sell it later i will sell it tomorrow another is that 
that uh, they lack focus, they have little or no financial commitment, okay, time management is also very, very important. Therefore, if you lack time management, of course, you might fail in direct selling or personal selling. Another is that, okay, uh, they take advantage of customers and business partners for self gain or wrong motives so for example if a company would say okay you can sell this product at this price but if you are a very selfish salesperson and you go beyond the selling price okay then definitely you might fail in direct selling okay business so Let's try also to take a look at the reasons why some people would quit their direct selling business. Number one, again, it's lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge meaning to say you do not have any idea okay, on the product that you're selling. You do not have enough knowledge about your product. Moreover, okay, they also quit because maybe they lack support. They quit once they felt rejected and refuses to try again. So if you are somebody who's uh, a quitter, okay, you just felt rejected once and then you do not want to try again, then definitely, okay, the result is that you will quit your direct selling business. Um, another reason is that they are influenced by people who are negative about direct selling. Um, they are not enjoying what they are doing. They are too obsessed with profits that when they need to sacrifice some of it, they got or they get discouraged. Okay, next, let's take a look at pitfalls of a starter. So there are things that you should remember if you want to become a successful salesperson. Number one, um, thinking that direct or personal selling is a get-rich-quick scheme is actually a big no-no. Why? Because people who actually succeed in business took time to learn. Remember Go Kong Wei, one of the richest uh, man in the Philippines. Okay, did not earn his million overnight. He actually was very, very persistent. He endured many years of selling to uh, uh, selling products in the market. Okay, Be before he became a successful businessman, the owner of Cebu Pacific, Robinson, etc., etc. Okay, another businessman who did not start uh, rich was Henry C. Okay, we all know that Henry C. <clears throat> was a Filipino business magnate investor and a philanthropist, okay, known for his involvement in Philippines retail industry. He started, okay, his business or he did not start uh, big, but rather he he used to sell shoes diba? before he became a rich or billionaire in the Philippines. Okay, so it says here that people who succeed in their business took time to learn. How do they learn? By attending countless trainings, okay, reading hundreds of books, having patience, persistence, consistency, enduring years of rejection you might be rejected over and over again but if you actually are somebody who is very very persistent then definitely you will become successful and experiencing numerous failures before they get their first million in the business so you have to remember that another is that if you want to become a successful business person okay especially in selling you should never ever lie in your business okay or say anything negative against anyone remember that personal selling is based on trust so it is actually uh, a relationship marketing why because personal selling is based on trust so never lie in personal selling
Next is take time to learn the business. Okay, take time to learn, attend training first. Okay, so you should never talk to anyone unless you are trained. You might say something wrong, okay, to the right people and you only have one chance to make it good or to make a bad impression. Next, never mention controversial words when inviting people to do join your business. You might create a bad impression of using the wrong words when approaching your prospects. What are controversial um, words that you should never ever mention to your prospects? Like for example, perhaps um, politics, religion, these are some of the controversial topics that you should avoid because people have different point of views. So you should not mention these unless of course um, they're your friends. But if you are trying to convince or trying to have a prospect okay to buy your product you should avoid mentioning these controversial words okay or controversial topics right so you have to be very very careful with your words because once they are said they can only be forgiven but remember they're not forgotten next be smart in choosing venues or place of meeting so always remember to choose the right environment. Never ever choose an environment that you cannot control. For example, okay, if you are trying to sell products to your customers, okay, do not bring them to perhaps a place wherein they are distracted instead of focusing their attention to you they might get distracted because their environment is not suitable okay for you to present your uh, product so avoid place with a lot of uncontrollable distractions do not also entertain questions uh, during the meeting proper so this is basically one of the biggest rookie mistakes so you can perhaps entertain if you are presenting your product to your potential clients and they're asking questions perhaps you can tell them that you can answer questions once your presentation is finished so even if you are tempted to answer and satisfy all questions tell your prospects that questions will be answered in a one-on-one -on -one setting it's easier to answer them uh, if you have a one-on-one -on -one setting Okay, next. Okay, next. You should never ever force or beg people to join the business or buy product. Okay, you should be confident that your product is great. Because if you beg them to buy your product, uh, your potential client might think that there is something wrong in that product. That's why you really want to dispose that product right away if uh, they don't avail of what they're offering or you are offering treat it as a loss or their loss and not yours so give some dignity to what you are representing and doing so for example if they try to okay uh, negotiate with you with a price that is way too low okay um do not give in of course because they might think that your product is cheap you have to give some dignity to what you are representing or you have to give some dignity to the product that you are selling okay next never take advantage of people in the business so it's very very important that you should never ever take advantage of people okay um do not take advantage of people because remember when we speak of personal selling it's based on trust okay so never use people and love money but instead use the money and love people so do not take advantage of people next is that never listen to dream stealers and never allow negative people to influence you so always remember that along the way if you're selling your product people might not always agree with you they might say something that might 
you know, put you down, but do not allow them to influence you. Always remember that whoever is trying to bring you down is already beneath you. So finally, please remember that sales are contingent upon the attitude of the salesman and not the attitude of the prospect. So it's very, very important that if you are a salesperson, you have to watch your attitude. So that ends our uh, discussion uh, for today. Um, what I want you now to do is to look at your course module and please answer activity 1.1 okay, to be submitted uh, at the end of the period. Okay, kindly follow instruction or instructions and I'll see you. Uh, next meeting.